So um, we generate everything. Everything is through our perception of our reality. So if we hold particular beliefs, okay, and those beliefs are taught to us through usually trauma, and they're not good beliefs, right? They're limiting beliefs. And uh, they come to us because of trauma. They come to us because of indoctrination. If you're told by a parent uh, that you're worthless, you're going to believe them because you're being told over and over and over. And uh, your life is awful, so it must be true, okay? So all these deep-seated beliefs, they enter through our conscious experience and embed themselves in our subconscious mind. And because our mind, in its wisdom, automatically goes away from pain to pleasure, it kind of encapsulates these memories and buries them very deeply. So, for example, um, if you were always told to shut up, okay, as a child, how dare you talk about that? Don't talk about that with me. That's a throat chakra issue, okay? So disease will manifest in this area. Welcome to a Broader Lands podcast. The opinions expressed on Broaderlands podcasts are those of the guest speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of the host or Broaderlands podcast. What an honor. Thank you so much for asking me. I'm I'm so thrilled. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I found your channel on YouTube and, and I started listening to you and I'm like, oh, she's pretty cool. I gotta get her on for sure. Oh, thank you. I'm so <laughs> glad <laughs> Same. <laughs> Same. I've been binge listening to uh, your guests, and I'm honored to be included. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I love learning from people, so I look forward to learning from you. Um, yeah. Maybe you could share a little bit about yourself and who you are and what you do, if you don't mind. Well, um, I go. My name is Anne Marie Morales, and I go by Anne Marie, the Art of Healing. Um, I started out this name, the Art of Healing, because I'm an artist. And uh, I've been an art teacher and an artist most of my life. I'm also a vocal artist and a visual artist. These are my pieces behind me. And um, I started out by selling Reiki-infused artwork. And that's why I called it the Art of Healing. But then my channeling kind of like took over and um, the name kind of stuck. Mm -hmm. uh, so right now what I do is I'm a multidimensional energy master healer and um, I'm a channeler of light language and of beautiful high vibrational beings and fairies and angels and ascended masters and galactic beings and all sorts of different things and um, uh what else? I guess I call myself an intuitive psychic as well. Uh, I get into people's energy field and I uh, move energy around, clear energy out, release attached energies, and um, figure out why people are where they are because uh, we create our own our own situations. And wow. sometimes we don't realize how we do it. So that's one of the skills that I have is that I could look into a past life i could see where that came from and um kind of like being a little multi-dimensional detective but it's great <laughs> and, um yeah that's how i'm helping people these days yeah thank you <laughs> did you come into this world like that or did, was it like a process of awakening for you yeah it, it was a process it was it was a long process um if I look back on my life, I could say that I was always kind of in touch with spirit. Um, there was a time uh, I, I grew up in a, a, a Maltese Catholic family. I'm an only child uh, and um, a very devout Catholic family. As a matter of fact, I was a cantor in the Catholic Church and I cantered for over 40 years, like since I was a child. 
I've been in front of people giving my voice, singing for God and for Jesus. And um, that was like my entire life uh, for most of my life um, until everything kind of just fell apart. <laughs> and then um, everything, one year after another, I had fall apart after fall apart. I, I lost a child. My marriage fell apart. I lost my job. Um, I lost my life savings. And, you know, it was just like, okay, I'm done. Like nothing is real. You know, I said all the rosaries, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I did what you told me to do. I went to confession. I abstained from this and still everything fell apart. So... Uh, that kind of was like all of that tragedy year after year after year of, of tragedy and, and um, kind of losing my mental stability uh, got me to a point where what they say, you're at the bottom of the barrel. It's like you have no place else to go but up. And um, once all of my life illusions were shattered, then I then I was able to learn something new because I was pretty, pretty well indoctrinated in that life. Yeah. So did you have like a, a spiritual awakening, a wham bam awakening, or was it like the ed educational variety? You um, would say? Well, what happened was, um, like I said, all, all my structures that I believed in blew apart. So I mm. believed in marriage, right? And that blew apart. Um, I believed in my religion and that blew apart. And I believed, oh, I, I have this great career. I'm an art teacher. You know, I was an elementary art teacher. Well, even that, I got laid off uh, from a, a wonderful, well-paying job. And so I ended up having to do what I needed to do to make money because I was already separated uh, from my ex-husband. I uh, didn't have the job and I was laid off for four years. So it was a long time. And I'm a very creative person. So I ended up, it's a great little story, if you don't mind me telling you. Um, I ended up making fancy cakes. So mm -hmm. around the same time Cake Boss was coming out, I was already making them and uh, I was making them for people. And I made the wedding cake of this very, very unique woman, flaming red hair. She was an older bride. And she loved she loved my Swiss meringue buttercream. And she's like, oh, I want to feed this to my guests. I want them. And her um, soon-to-be husband was a photographer. And she found this cake online that had photographs printed on edible paper. And it was a beautiful 50th anniversary wedding cake, actually. And she said, I want a cake like this. And I was like, Oh, well, that's my cake. I made it. And she said, what? You made this? It could have come from anywhere in the world. And it happened to be it. my cake. So I made her wedding cake. That's beautiful synchronicity, right? So yes. I mean, my life is filled with beautiful synchronicities. So I made her wedding cake and um, time went on. And I kept in touch with her because she was really cool. And I liked her. And um. I was uh, working at a summer camp. Uh, this was right before I was rehired to be an art teacher. So four years later. And uh, I had um, I had rescued this kitten. I know it's a long convoluted story, but it's cute. So I rescued this kitten from a dumpster at this camp where everybody was leaving for the winter, right? So it was a summer camp. Everybody was going home. And um, before I could think, I was like, oh, I'll take her home. And then I was like, what? <laughs> where did hey. that voice come from, you know? So I took this little cat home, and uh, I had won a pet psychic reading. Uh, and even though I was Catholic and I was still singing in the choir, I loved the fringe stuff. I loved the, you know, um, like demonic possession. I was really into that. I was into apparitions of Jesus and Mary. And so I loved all of the paranormal stuff. I was always into paranormal. And that's something that I had my whole life. I had all these paranormal experiences with 
unfortunately, dark beings. If you want to call them demons, you can call them demons. So they were always interfering um, in my life. So anyway, I got this pet psychic reading and the pet psychic said, the cat is telling me that you're a healer. And I said, I'm a healer. What do you mean? <laughs> and yeah. Do you do Reiki? And I said, what's a Reiki? I had no idea what Reiki energy was. Well, fast forward about a week or so, not very long. This woman that I had made her wedding cake with this flaming red hair <laughs> opened up a metaphysical shop Wow! in the town next to me. Not to mention she lived in the same town, which is weird because I could have been from anywhere. And uh, we happen to live in the same town. She opened up a metaphysical shop and offered a Reiki one class. <laughs> and even I, in my Catholic world, knew that I needed this. And so this was in a time in my life where I had separated from my husband and I was really learning about me. I was getting to know Anne Marie. Who the heck was Anne Marie? She wasn't somebody's wife anymore. You know, so she, you know, who am I? So this really brought on my spiritual awakening. And yeah. that it was just a search for self and a search for understanding, like, why was I being you know, attacked all the time by darkness. Why, why were these things happening to me? And finally, under, you know, learning about Reiki, it was just like, I knew it. Like, I knew it. I embodied it. It became me. And I took all the her Reiki courses. I became a master teacher with her. I began to attune Reiki masters with her for a couple of years. Um... And then uh, I learned about channeling. Boy. And uh, so there was a, a, a very, like, there was a lot of darkness, but then there was like a really deep, a deep point um, that had to do with uh, my still husband uh, getting his girlfriend pregnant. And I had always wanted more children. I have two sons. And I had, like I said, I had lost a, a child. And uh, he said no to his wife. He said no to me. Um, but then ended up getting this woman pregnant. And it was, it was so devastating. I was like, that's it. There's no God. Nothing. Like, I don't care. There's no God. It's, it can't be. And it was, it was extremely tough. And that, that, that's what put me to suicide, close to suicide. Mm. So um, I had um, I had thought that there was like no God for about a day <laughs> because I knew in all of my life that there definitely was. There was a God. I love Jesus. Um, I couldn't do the religion anymore because it didn't work. And... Like I said, I was always this fringe Catholic. I love to read about apparitions of Mary. I love to read about people who communicated with Jesus. So I typed in my computer at work. I was teaching again. And uh, I typed in the computer, um, apparitions of Jesus. And this website, this, this YouTube came up, Channeling Jesus. Mm -hmm. And it was by a beautiful woman named Tina Louise Spalding. Uh, and she is everything that she had on there. She, she already had a couple hundred videos. I watched every video and she was a course in miracles teacher. Mm. And I was introduced to the course in miracles through her. I was introduced to channeling through her and it was just like the rest is history. Seriously. <laughs> wow. So I'll pause there and see what if you a, have any other questions. <laughs> what a beautiful story you have. I appreciate yeah. that. And I've been in that dark place where I wanted yeah. to kill myself and I was on the other end of it, you know, and, um, yeah, so I, I totally understand. And, um, but it's only by dying that one awakens to eternal life, like St. Francis says. And, uh, mm -hmm. I, I truly believe that all that stuff made me who I am today. And I'm truly grateful for that now. Right. But at the time when I was suffering, I couldn't see that. But, uh, I heard you do a, a interview before we get into a course, um, I heard you do an interview with Barry Littleton. I love Barry Littleton. I hope to get him one day. Um, 
And you talked about being a school teacher, and I thought this was profound. Mm -hmm. And you would uh, be able to, um, you had students that were were uh, psychic mediums. Am I am I right? Yeah, yeah. So it was in that time that I was laid off from my teaching job up in New York State that I had taken a job in the Bronx, New York. Um, and uh, the Bronx is, boy, what a, a hotbed for a lot of dark activity, a lot of paranormal activity, and a lot of dark activity. So, so um, there was a student that had these beautiful blue eyes. And most of the kids were uh, uh, children of color, either Hispanic or African-American. And this kid never, he was always picked on. He mm. could never look up. And he said to me, the kids were making fun of him. And I was like, what's going on here? And they're like, oh, he's talking about ghosts again, miss. He's talking about ghosts. And I was like, ghosts? I'm like, that's my thing. It was like, what do you mean, ghosts? Come and talk to me. Like, don't talk to them about it. They won't understand. Come talk to me. So he talked to me. He goes, Miss, I can never study because these these ghosts are bothering me. And they're making fun of the teacher. And they're poking around her. And I, I can't even look at the, her because, you know, they're just bothering me. And I, I was like, oh, my gosh, you know. So he revealed to me that in his apartment, there is a little lady in white that protects him from all the spirits that bother him and that these two entities were bothering him. They, they bother him at home, uh, but this lady takes care of them and they follow him to school and they bother him at school because there's nobody there. And he just looked at me with these beautiful eyes and he's like, Miss, help me. And I'm like, ah, you know, what am I going to do? I don't know. So I, I we went home for the weekend and I prayed about it and uh, it came to me. I was like, ask the lady to help you here. So don't just ask the lady to help you at home. Ask her to help you here. So we went home for the weekend, or it was a long weekend, and I hadn't heard from the kid and finally came back. And uh, I saw him, and he said, so what happened? And he goes, well, I wasn't at home because I went to my grandparents' house, and then I came back home, and then I asked her. And she said yes. And so this little spirit in white came to the school and took care of those energies. So this kid was able to look at the teacher. He was able to concentrate. He was able to go on with his, his schooling without any interference from these energies. Isn't that, it was a, it's well, a great story. So, yeah. yeah. Is. <laughs> so would that be considered an attachment? No, no. I wouldn't consider that an attachment. No, not at all. If it's um, following him? Yeah, no. And the no. reason is this. Um, when you have a psychic gift, it, it's like you're sending up a flare into the lower <sighs> fourth astral. Okay. And these kids that ha are born with these gifts um, always have like little antennas going up and they're, they're being seen. Okay. So it's not their fault. It's just who they are. And you see this with a lot of young psychic children. Spirits will come to them from miles around because they're like, oh, here's an open one. We can go, you know, because we have a lot more control over this than we understand. And if you're a child and you're unaware of kind of like how to navigate these energies, uh, yeah, you're going to get traumatized and you're going to get kind of uh, bugged and uh, disturbed by these energies. Um, but it's just a matter of understanding how powerful we are as human beings and how we're able to make commands and set up boundaries, energetic boundaries, and say, no, don't bother me. Um, but it's just a matter of spiritual education and psychic education in that case. They do. How do they protect our children? Or what are some of the signs that they may be having these interactions with uh, the paranormal? Because uh, they'll be quick to be labeled as mental health problems, right? Sure. Sometimes. Sure. I mean, you could get that too. But I think, you know, now you're going to see it everywhere. And I think if you even if you go on TikTok, you can, uh, or Instagram, you can pull up, you know, my said, my kid sees ghosts and stuff like that. You know, <laughs> what's important for parents to understand is, is 
and and we are really uh, bringing in these star children are being born and these kids that are coming in with full clairs open and ready to go uh, to assist in our ascension process. So um, really, if you're a parent and you notice that your child is having very wild dreams or is afraid, what's important to do is uh, for sure not to shut it down, um, but to educate yourself because Maybe you have an aunt or your mom or somebody in your family that is psychic. Uh, maybe you yourself are psychic and you just shut it off when you were a kid because you couldn't handle it. Uh, people do that all the time. But educate yourself and teach your child. And, uh, in, you know, we are divine creator beings and we create our reality Surround your child before it goes to bed with a bubble of love and light. Tell your child, just imagine your angels next to you. Imagine a dome of love light around you and you can sleep in peace. So that's that's what I suggest. Yeah, thank you. It's so hard. Um, sometimes as parents, people forget living in a system on survival mode. A lot of people and exactly. all busy, stressed out, nine to five and some yep. working other jobs and they just forget all those simple little small things that mm -hmm. a child needs. So I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know, I know I did. Yeah. Thank you. Um, the art of healing. What's that? Yeah. If you don't mind me asking, maybe you can expand on that. Yeah. It's, um, you know, if you want to take it literally, uh, any creative activity that we do is healing, right? Any, uh, way that we tap into our, creative nature allows us to channel our God self, our creative being. Um, and like I said, you know, the art of healing came about because when I first started doing Reiki, um, I would, I was in a very creative time in my life and I was doing a lot of painting and I wanted to sell my Reiki infused art um, mm. but as my healing, um, practice, I guess, started to unfold and I desired to reach out and do that, the name just stuck that way. I love it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, have you, do you work with people that have entity attachments? That's a one um, topic I like to talk about, learn more about as yeah. far as entity attachment. Maybe you could share a little bit about what they are. Sure. Sure. And like I said, and what I mentioned in my story earlier, I grew up, um, I, it started uh, at age 14. Uh, I had, my parents are from the island of Malta, and we had moved back there uh, for a year. And apparently on my father's side of the family, there's a lot of um, clairvoyance and psychics. I didn't know that at the time, so I guess I get my gifts from that side of my family. But uh, I had... Um, made friends with my second cousin, who was a full-blown clairvoyant. And she was 18 and I was 14, And uh, but she was into the occult. And mm -hmm. um, we had done a Ouija board together. And uh, we just did a makeshift Ouija board. And uh, she used to go into trance. We used to say the, the Hail Mary. We'd do a decade of the rosary. We'd wear rosary beads around our neck and then do the Ouija board, which doesn't make any sense at all, but that's what we did. And um, since that point, you know, I kind of, like I said, I sent up a flare. And uh, one thing that we have to understand is that this reality that we experience is not the only reality that we experience. We are present in multiple dimensions. And that's why we say we are multidimensional. So there is the dimension of the fourth astral dimension, which is where ghosts, spirits, you want to call them demons, or energies dwell. Okay. Now you're talking specifically about entity attachments. There are quite a few ways to have entity attachments. Uh, the first way is to actually invite them in. Okay. So if you, you know, I'm a channeler and uh, I vibrate at a certain frequency and beings that are able to lower their frequency to mine come in through me. 
So, uh, but uh, lower frequencies cannot come up to me, but they can come into anybody who dwells in their frequency. So you could either open yourself up to it through magic, through rituals, etc. You could um, have tears in your auric field, in your uh, aura. So your aura and your personal vibration is kind of like a little personal shield that you have around you. When we do activities, uh, for example, we indulge in, let's say, a little bit too much drink, okay? <laughs> and we're going into a bar and we get drunk. Um, we really uh, allow that frequency of the spirits, of the alcohol, to come into our bodies. And um, it kind of like matches the frequency of, we could call them lost souls. We could call them, uh, yeah, lost energy that needs to find a home and frequently they will come in through a weak aura and uh, they could be i don't know disincarnate spirits who used to be human that need the frequency that loved being drunk or they need that energy and they will latch on to either uh usually an organ okay a part of a physical part of your body um, they will latch on to you. Uh, I had somebody who came to me uh, for an energy healing. I like to do these metaphysical expos um, because it brings me in front of real people. And I really love that. And this woman, you know, she was just kind of normal, uh, nothing too fancy. And I felt this energy around her. It was like between her solar plexus and her sacral chakra. And it just didn't match her. I said, it feels like an old woman. And then for some reason, I asked her, I said, do you work in a hospital? And she said, yes, I'm a physician. Oh. I was like, well, you've got yourself a hijacker. You've got a hijacked energy on you. So we can go into places like nursing homes or hospitals where these disincarnate spirits just are hanging around and without even knowing we might get a, a hijacked energy to us right and then we just won't feel right um i remember one time personally i had an attached energy and it was when i was you know kind of going through this transitional period i was drinking a little bit too much but i was already aware of universal energy i was already doing my reiki and um, I was actually ghost hunting at the time. So that's kind of the phase that I was going through. And I had this pain in my shoulder, uh, over my left shoulder. And I called this woman who did angel an angel reading on me. And I'm like, something's wrong. Because I just felt, I didn't feel like myself. I felt like there was a pillow on my head. It was a very odd feeling. And she's like, Anne-Marie, you have a gargoyle on your shoulder and it's clutching its claws into your shoulder. And I felt it. I felt a physical pain in my shoulder. I didn't know it was a gargoyle, um, but she said it was a gargoyle and it had little babies. <laughs> it had little baby gar gargoyles yeah. attached to it. So we're all kind of susceptible if we allow ourselves to get into that frequency okay and there were other things around that particular time in my life which was just a process of my spiritual growth right um and i had to go through them uh even you know my kids went through some things when they were younger um so there was a time where these energies were around me a lot um but Getting back to, you know, how we can get rid of them. Um, when I come across them, I see them in different ways. They could be, like I said, just attached energy. And um, 
I come from Catholicism, and in Catholicism, I used to, like I said, I always believed in the demons. My dad was really into it, and I think my dad, you know, who's long since uh, transitioned, I think he, I think he was a lot more uh, psychic than he let us know, because he knew about the darkness, and he used to do a prison ministry, very, you know, very Catholic, but he had his own demons, as we would say. Yeah. And he would go into the prisons here um, in Florida where where he lived, and uh, he, he said uh, the, the, the prisoners who were possessed would run up to the bars, would rattle the bars, would expose themselves to him. So I believe that my dad was a lot more in tune than he ever let me know. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, so... I lost my train. I lost my train of thought. So, uh, getting back to removing them, is that what we were talking about? Yes. That yeah. I was a prayer warrior for an exorcist that worked with the diocese of New York when I lived in New York. And, um, I would get interfered in my dreams. Um, I remember I was, it was a Saturday night into a Sunday and I was going to pray for my friend who has since transitioned um, because he was doing a really difficult exorcism. Um, And the way that they dealt with the exorcisms uh, was with fight fire with fire. Um, You're an evil entity. You're going to go back to hell. And, um, you know, I was all into that. Um, uh what's her name it was the conjuring um medium <laughs> and do you, have you heard of the amityville horror i know i haven't goodness now my mind is going blank um but there was a very famous couple and the conjuring films were based off of them uh and i met their daughter and their son-in-law, and they were really famous demonologists. Mamma mia, I can't believe I can't remember who they are right now, but it's okay. So, I mean, I knew them. And one of the things, the complaints uh, from the woman who lived through the conjuring um, demonic uh, infestation was that they exercised the house and then they left and they did no follow up and there was a lot of trouble afterwards. So when you get rid of a, either a demon or whoever it is, you can't just get rid of them because they got to go somewhere else. All right. It's like you're taking away uh, a hermit crab from the shell. You're taking the shell away from them. OK, but but they got to find another home. I had this experience with when I when I started to learn about channeling and I was raising my vibration and this wonderful man from Europe explained the most beautiful thing. And this is how I do when I deal with these energies. They come from God. Lucifer was an angel. He came from God, okay? He came from love. We all come from love, even the darkest and the most uh, vicious energy, demonic energy, if you want to put it that way. So why am I not looking at them and representing love to them? Why am I fighting against them? So. The way that I approach these attached energies, no matter where they come from, is number one, you came from God. You've merely forgotten because they have. They've gone so far away from the light, they forgot that that's where they came from. So I approach these energies representing source. So I come to them with the highest source frequency I can muster. I take a deep breath. I put a smile on my face and I converse with them. And I say, I come to you reminding you that you are love. 
and I get a lot of pushback. And I say to them, no, you are love. Do not be afraid. And I will converse with them through my client. And sometimes they'll say things like, but I'm afraid I'm going to get judged. I'm afraid I'm going to go to hell. I'm afraid of this. I'm afraid of that. I said, there is no fear. God does not judge. God merely loves. And I say that this individual cannot support you. They are not your source. Source is your source. And I represent that love. And I call with me Jesus, and I call with me Archangel Michael, and I always invoke them when I deal with these kinds of energies. And what I end up telling them is this. I said, Earth is ascending, and there is no longer a place for you. Yeah. So you have two options. You can reverse your polarization. You can go from the dark to the light. And you will be welcomed and you will continue on existing in the light. Or you will go back to source for recycling. These are your options because I am here to assist in the ascension of the planet and I am here to assist this beautiful soul. So these are your options and I do it with the greatest of love and you have the choice. And some will say, cool, I'm out. And they will right. reverse polarization. It's really like that quick and I'll feel it. I'll feel it in my body. I'll feel a lifting um, and they will go. And like, you know, Archangel Michael knows what to do. Uh, he takes them on away and they continue on with their existence because they were created by God. And then if they don't, then I'm like, okay. This is your free will choice, and I honor you as a free will uh, individual, and this is your free will choice. And you will now be taken away, but you cannot remain with this individual. You cannot re remain, uh, remain with this human soul. And so they are removed. Um, I had a, an amazing situation where, well, my mother is still alive. She's 98. And she still uh, uh, goes to church every week, and I take her. I still attend Catholic Mass. I don't participate, but I'm there. And um, there was a particular church in New York uh, that had a lot of creepy statues, and it had a big cemetery outside. And I went to it. I had gone in there before. And I remember taking my mom there one time, and within about an hour... I became extremely violent. And for me, that's already a channeler to become very violent. I was like, that's not me. And so mm. I remember, okay, I got an attached energy. You know, I didn't protect myself. I didn't think about it. I didn't know whatever. Okay. And um, so I was like, I got rid of this attached energy and um, I learned my lesson. And so about a year later, I had to go into that church again. And I was like, oh, dang, uh, I'm going into that church again. And I was like, okay, well, I know what to do. And I'm just going to do it. I'm not going to be afraid. I'm going to go in there. I'm going to do it. So my mother needs help walking. I got her into the door and I couldn't, I couldn't go past the door. Whatever was inside wow. that church did not want me to enter. I literally stopped at the door. And I was like, okay, here we go. Battle gear on. I'm going in. So I took a deep breath. I called in my guidance and I walked in the door and I sat down. It was at the very front of the church because it was like a side door. And I sat in the first row. My mom was next to me and I was at the end. First row, first pew. The altar was right there. And all of a sudden, I start to channel light language, and I'm channeling, and I'm channeling, and I'm channeling. And in my mind's eye, I see two archangels, one at the back, one at the back right, one at the back left. I saw two dragons, one at the front right, one at the front left. And within a span of a minute, I could tell that there were all these demonic energies trapping human souls in this church. And I did what I do. 
I said, you have no choices. You must let them free. You're either going to the light or you're going back to source. And yeah. it was happening so fast. There were beings that went, there were energies that went, and there were energies that stayed. And I said, okay, Archangel Michael, bring your legion, bring your, pe your, your, your angels and archangels, and we remove them in the name of Jesus now. It is so and so it is. And it lifted, and I felt this sense of, they're gone. We are free. Whoa. And I'm telling you, I got goosebumps thinking about this. And then I was like, okay, take them all. Angels and archangels, take these beautiful souls onto the light. Move them on. We can no longer have them trapped on this earth plane any longer. We are in ascension and it must change. And I was able to stay in the church for the remainder of the Catholic Mass. And I left and, and it was an extraordinary experience. So, yeah, and I've got other stories to talk about that well, too. Well, it's interesting. But, uh, and I love that. Um, as, as this is all going on, everyone's in their service performing their normal Yep. service and rituals that they do while you're yep. doing something else <laughs> did anyone? <Yep. laughs> that's interesting mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah yeah Kay. and like i said it could happen i don't know it happened in the span of a minute i i don't know it i don't know what time frame because you know time is kind of strange <laughs> so can a collective have like a like a religion or just any collective or group have an attachments like an individual you know, that's a very um, interesting question. Um, I'm not going to denounce anybody's path. And I believe that we are all on our own spiritual journey. And it's not me to judge or not judge. Having said that, you know, um, I think that we have all been party to a collective um energetic spell i think you know what we've been through these past few years is very obvious that there are spells that are cast on a daily basis over humanity and not just locally but globally uh, through many different venues, through music, through medicine, through politics, through religion, any sort of any sort of social construct that puts itself as an authority, I believe, is backed by these kind of energies that want to entrap us. So the best way for us to avoid that is to think for ourselves. Mm. Yeah. I appreciate that. Um, you know, you talked about different ways of casting spells on us. And if you look at Hollywood, I'm sure you heard this before, but Hollywood represents the holly tree yeah. where the wizards would use to create their wands to cast spells on people. Mm -hmm. Television. Yeah. yeah interesting. That's right. Uh, and you, you know, and there are different channels, right? And you are programmed. <laughs> there are different programs that we watch, you know. Uh, you can go down the Disney rabbit hole, <laughs> which is an, a very fascinating, uh, fascinating thing uh, about the life of Walt Disney and the collective trauma that has always been inflicted by the Disney movies, uh, starting with Bambi. In the 1940s, I mean, why are all the protagonists orphans? Why mm. do they not have mothers, right? I mean, they are inflicting collective trauma on our psyches. Uh, and this is, this is, um, yeah. It's or very Pinocchio, tough. Very you tough. know, Pinocchio only is with that older man mm -hmm. in one bed, or he goes to that island. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah. it's human trafficking right there. If there's something. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy to think yep. about. Remember the little mermaid and I think they got sued for this in the original cover. Little the original little mermaid. There was a bunch of penises in the in the front of the cover. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. I remember when it came out, uh, my children were young and uh, my family had purchased all of the, they were the cassettes, you know, the video cassettes back then. And um, yeah, uh, a cousin of ours was like, look, there's a penis here. There's a penis. <laughs> And you had to, everybody was laughing about it, but, you know, that's subliminal programming. So in order to see that, you have to have penis consciousness. I'm just, yeah. I'm just joking around. You do, I'm just, you have to I'm have it joking. on your mind, you know? No, but, but it's scary to think about when I first seen the Pinocchio video and they're breaking it down about sex trafficking or, or human trafficking. It just, it's scary, you know? Mm -hmm. And knowing that he was a Freemason, I, I mean, I'm saying all Freemasons are bad, but, you mm -hmm. know, they have Club 33 over there. And, uh, yep. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I can actually, um, it kind of segues pretty interestingly into another experience that I had over Disney property. Um, and this just happened three years ago, two years ago, two years ago. I was traveling in Orlando uh, on I-4 over Disney property. And all of a sudden, I began to, we were stuck in traffic on I-4, which is not unusual. I started to channel light language very heavily, and my dragons came in. So I work with dragon energy as well, and it is a protective and a clearing energy. Uh, and my body started to contort, and I felt my hands do this. And in my mind's eye, I saw that underneath I-4, which is an eight-lane road, you've got four lanes going one direction, four lanes going another direction. It's enormous, right over Disney property. I saw other roadways lined with cages. And I saw my body went like this. So the dragon energy threw me blasted, blasted the energy of the trafficking that was going on right mm. underneath normal reality. And it was in, in it, it just took over me. And my boyfriend at the time was driving and he was as, as his, his story is as wacky as my life. And so I was like, Oh my God, you know what just happened? And I told him that I saw another roadway underneath and that this dragon energy blasted and cleared it. Uh, it, it was, wow. It was an extraordinary uh, experience. Crazy. When you experience <laughs> this kind of stuff, what, are you in a different dimension or density or? Well, you know, we are multidimensional. There's no reason why there's not a part of me that dwells in that realm as well. At the same time of yeah. me being present in this reality. So I think these merging and this kind of fluidity happens all the time. And it happens to us all the time in many different ways. We can travel for a moment and just everything is beautiful and the birds are chirping and the sun is shining and you're just like, oh my God, this is so awesome. I snorted. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm a very again. raw, a raw and real person here. Okay. <laughs> it's awesome. So like you can be in this, you know, you can be in this beautiful heavenly realm and that's you. You're there. Enjoy it. You know, when life is perfect, wow, no, notice it, <laughs> be present with it and say, yeah, this is what I want, you know, and then there are times where our frequency dips and we stub our toe and we get a dent in the car and, you know, all these other things happen to us. So, yeah, I think it happens more than we really realize. Yeah, thank you. Um, <laughs> you were talking about light language. Maybe you could share a little bit and help us expand on what that is. Okay, so um, we are all here to shine our light, and light is frequency. And you know that there is no such thing as darkness. There's just the absence of light. And so uh, the first thing that I ever channeled uh, was light language. And I was uh, driving on my way to work, and I was listening. Uh, this was during my awakening, and I was already... Uh, practicing A Course in Miracles, and uh, it was all a beautiful time in my life. And all of a sudden, I started to repeat one word over and over and over and over uncontrollably, blah, over and over and over again. 
And then I came home and I would say something and then I would answer myself in this seeming gibberish. Yeah. And because light language is a frequency of light and it's not meant to be understood by our ego minds because our ego minds are always judging and our ego minds are always saying, well, this has to make sense. I have to make sense of this. I've got to put this in this peg and I got to put this in this hole. But when you're listening to light language, your conscious mind is bypassed and that light speaks directly to your light body. So we all have light bodies. We emanate light. That's our auric field. That's our chakra system, our, uh, you know, our aura okay, is made of light. And we are familiar with energy centers in our body. The chakra system is based on white light, the fractionation of white light and the colors of the rainbow. Okay, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet or indigo, violet, and then finally white. All right, the spectrum of light that we can see. So light language can be so many different things. It can be personal healing for yourself. I find before I channel, I channel light language and it kind of like clears my pipes and raises my vibration really quick. Um, I also believe it is star language because I can channel something that sounds Chinese. I can channel something that sounds Indian. I can channel something that sounds Native American. Okay. But it's no language that's on this earth. And that goes to say that I think that star language seeded our earth language. Yeah. Right. Um, that our language comes from the stars. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Um, I want to mention something. I'm going to rewind it back to something you said. And I've asked this question before, but I find it very intriguing. Um, you talked about when we're talking about attachments and when we're drinking it. And I used to be an alcoholic. And um, when I was, I would black out a lot. Um, is that like opening a portal? Because if you're an alcoholic, full blown alcoholic or an addict, you definitely have some kind of. Um, trauma unresolved trauma and you know all these resentments sure. and unhealed stuff within sure. oneself does that sure. make it more uh delicious or more easier for these like you said shooting up a flare mm -hmm. to these entities yeah. yeah um in that case you're opening yourself up okay through but, the use of the alcohol and like i said it's happened to me <laughs> it has happened to me and um I remember being on holiday in the Dominican Republic with my ex-husband and I drank a lot. We, our marriage was really bad and we tried to go away for our anniversary and I drank a lot. And my ex-husband said, you were talking to me. You were saying things to me that blah, blah, blah. And I was like, no, I wasn't. And he's like, yeah, you were. I was like, I don't remember that. That wasn't me. So, yes, absolutely. Um, it does happen. And when you get blackout drunk, you don't know what you're doing and you don't know who's in your body. I know, uh, in the 12 step community, they mentioned dis ease and I heard you do a little video on that dis ease. The problem mm -hmm. is they, they get caught up in disease, but it's really dis ease, which is what you explained is trapped emotions. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, um, we generate everything. Everything is through our perception of our reality. So if we hold particular beliefs, okay, and those beliefs are taught to us through usually trauma, and they're not good beliefs, right? They're limiting beliefs. And uh, they come to us because of trauma. They come to us because of indoctrination. If you're told by a parent uh, that you're worthless, you're going to believe them because you're being told over and over and over and uh, your life is awful. So it must be true. Okay. So all these deep seated beliefs, they enter 
through our conscious experience and embed themselves in our subconscious mind. And because our mind in its wisdom automatically goes away from pain to pleasure, it kind of encapsulates these memories and buries them very deeply. So for example, um, if you were always told to shut up, okay, as a child, how dare you talk about that? Don't talk about that with me. That's a throat chakra issue, okay? So disease will manifest in this area, okay? If you are, uh, maybe you're a hyperactive child and you get beaten into submission to calm down, uh, that's a root chakra issue. So maybe you'll have foot trouble, hip trouble, knee trouble, okay? Sexual trouble. Um, if you're always told that you're garbage, you have, you know, you're, you're not self, you know, or you have some sort of situation that happens to you where this is, uh, unfortunately happened to you and, and you, you take it into your solar plexus. So what do you get? You get ulcers, you get stomach cancer, uh, you get digestive issues because it's all about the solar plexus, that area below your rib cage and above your belly button, okay? So that's how dis-ease is created. Does that answer your question? Yeah, that's a beautiful um, answer as well. So yes. the importance of working on ourselves as being a human being is is very important. It's not about just, um, you know, I think that's where spirituality comes in, you know, because um, it helps heal us. It's not about, you know, Worshiping a deity all the time, some people may have a problem with that. It, it's really about, you know, um, inner peace and, and creating health and in harmony with ourselves as well. And so if we don't work, do any inner work, no shadow work or something to work on ourselves and, mm -hmm. and to transcend or, you know, heal from these traumas, it, it'll take us out with some disease mm -hmm. later down the line, right? That's correct. And you, your your higher self, your guides, your higher self you are all in accordance with this. And every experience that you encounter is reflecting to you what you hold within you. Okay. okay? So if you're always upset and angry and you are in the grocery store and you encounter somebody who is a real jerk to you, okay, you're encountering yourself. Okay, yeah. because we are all reflections of each other. In a, in a very beautiful and perfect way. So for sure, if you are encountering something over and over and over again, and once you are enlightened and you're, you, you understand this, that we do live in a reflective universe. And so if this is coming to me, it means that I hold a belief in it. So now it's time for me to turn the pointed finger back to myself and ask myself, where is this coming from? And I call it excavation. Mm. You're hammering at your belief systems with a pickaxe and you are excavating and trying to find the core root. And this all is, it can be obvious and sometimes it's not obvious. And that's where uh, I, I've begun studying um, to become a licensed clinical hypnotherapist. And uh, I've done, you know, I, I do regression work and I do shamanic journey work as well. But it's the whole concept of the subconscious mind and really um, how once we heal those deep embedded traumas, our lives and our frequency will shift dramatically. And it's an amazing, amazing work from a practitioner's point of view. Thank you. Um, I wanted to ask you some, because when I was a little kid, you know, you talked about the Catholic Church and, you know, being, I was kind of like, uh, you know, in my environment was kind of raised Catholic. Um, we never really went to church, but... You know, there was always Catholicism or church. I actually got kicked out of a communion or a, uh -huh. a, a class. I got in a fight. 
it's funny um during class uh but uh you know think I, i'm a young little boy and i don't know how to process this stuff you talked about conditioning and and i'm looking at jesus and he's crucified his blood and they're telling me that because of you uh mm -hmm. jesus died for your sins that's tra traumatizing if especially if i don't really? know how to process that stuff correctly you of know and, and then they're saying god is love like you said it earlier perfectly god it god doesn't judge you know, mm -hmm. uh, in Corinthians, it says, you know, that beautiful um, um, verse in Corinthians, love doesn't judge, uh, you know, mm -hmm. um, um, love record is wrong. Yeah. Kind. Does not put on ears. Yeah. Does that <laughs> record wrong doings. Yeah. But then right. the, I have this judging God. So it's like uh, fighting, like mm -hmm. what the heck's going on? You know, and uh, yep. so that, that stuff didn't, um, I think that caused some harm in me, conditioning, right? All that conditioning that Absolutely. you were saying. Um, absolutely but then if you look at the gnostic texts like uh the gospel of mary um uh, there's no such thing as sin and then it says that and uh, this is where i'm tying into is the course of miracles course mm -hmm. the course of miracles um it, it's just a totally different uh message and it's more beautiful more empowering how do we how do we heal from collective trauma i mean i have like the um the bishop, the first bishop of Yucatan's di um, diary, and he's he they literally drew women that were being burnt. Talked about people. Um, mm -hmm. How do we heal from that? All that trauma, that collective trauma. I mean, I wish the Catholic Church will own up to that and make some kind of amends to some of these to heal, help heal the world. But what, what's your take? How do we heal from collective trauma? Um, we have to heal ourselves, and that's what we can do. So we are a part of the human collective, right? And there are beings that are directly touched by, let us say, the darkness that resides within this dualistic world. So we live in duality. We have a split mind. We literally have two hemispheres to our brain. So we are here in a separated state. So we're constantly trying to reconcile these two parts of ourselves. Okay. How do we heal the collective trauma? We heal the trauma within ourselves. So you and your own personal journey have to go to the priest in your mind that taught you that the reason why Jesus is dead is because of you. And you have to look at that guy in your meditative space or however you want to do it and say, you know what? You were just telling me what you knew and I have to forgive you. Even if you did it in malice, I'm still going to let it go because I know better now. You, it's, it's really a process of looking into your own self and releasing your attachments to blame, your attachments to the boogeyman, this thing that they're the bad guy. Look, yes, okay, I'm not glossing over the atrocities that have been committed by like I said, any organization that sets itself as authority, uh, not just religion, but every global organization. And that's the other another rabbit hole to go down. Yeah. But we have to understand that we're here to heal. And the only way we're going to heal the macro is by healing the micros, by healing you within you can you yourself forgive the religion that taught you these falsities how is it that all the knowledge that i know i still go into church every sunday with my mother i'm honoring her journey i'm not in judgment and actually i was kneeling one time you know, because I'm still kneel when I'm supposed to kneel and I get up when I'm supposed to get up. I'm not going to sit there and go like this. Um, right. And I remember asking Jesus this very thing. I'm like, Jesus, how is it? How can you stand this? 
How can you stand it when you're up there and they're going up and they're eating your flesh and blood and, and you're, you're dead on a cr- How do you handle this? And he said, Anne Marie, do not judge them. They are on their own journey. And you were once just like them. Allow them to go through their journey and they will all come home no matter what. So I was like, okay, dude, that's what you say. That's what I'm going to do. And that's what I do. I don't judge it. I'm there merely holding the light. And when I go into Catholic Church now, I have beautiful spiritual healing experiences for myself. And I trust that I'm there for a reason. That's it. Thank you. It's very similar to what Ramakrishna said. It's our own self-realization, that which is our gift to the world. Because mm-hmm. if you become self-realized, you have obviously done some healing and transformation mm-hmm. work to have this awakening. Absolutely. Yeah, the way that it was channeled to me one time is that we are like uh, the poles of a circus tent. Okay, so if we raise ourselves up, we are collectively lifting everything else. We're connected by a web, right? So if we raise ourselves up, we are, I am collectively, through my connection with the collective, raising it up as well. And then there are those who are called to, you know, go into politics and change that way. And there are those people who are called uh, to start new religions or there are people that are called like yourself to start a podcast and teach that way so we all have our own individual callings but truly our own real task is to heal us and the rest will come that's that's what i truly believe yeah thank you um before we go i would love for you to touch on a course in miracles really quick and maybe share some stuff you love about it and uh yeah one of your first verses or so if you have one Thank you for that opportunity. Um, So, you know, growing up Catholic, um, this book, and I have it right here, um, was very familiar. It's right behind you. Yeah, mine's a little bit more worn and torn. Um, So um, this, this is a channeled text, and the voice is the voice of Jesus. Um, And I believe that it was brought about to bridge people coming out of religion and offering something that's not hierarchical, but a personal self-study course where you do it at your own pace. So you could either, there's different sections to it. Um, The front part is uh, called the text and it's all lessons or it's all um, explanation, we could say, of different things. Then the middle section is uh, called the workbook for students, and it's a daily meditation or a daily lesson, 365, one for each day of the year. And then in the back, you have a manual for teachers, and then you have some other beautiful little manuals, which um, I would like to to talk about a little bit because of my journey with the subconscious mind and into hypnotherapy. And there's a section in the back about psychotherapy. And so this goes back to disease. And um, I have a couple of things that I'd love to read from the back section. Okay. And, and they were such aha moments for me. And, um, So it says, sickness is insanity. Okay. Because all sickness is mental illness. And in it, there are no degrees. How about that? All sickness is insanity. Because we have within us this ego mind that is literally insane. And then we have this higher mind that is connected to all that is, that is literally part of source. And we are source here on this planet. 
Okay. And the beauty of this book is that it teaches non-dualism. So like I said before, we live in a dualistic world. We have a split mind, dark, light, on, off, black, white, ones, zeros, right? I mean, that seems to be the nature of this matrix reality. All right. But this beautiful study uh, allows us to just focus in one direction, towards love or away from love. And it tells the ego mind, get in your place. Okay, get in your place. And I just have one more thing. And there are beautiful lessons, you know, that I could talk about. But I this so blew my mind, I figured I'm going to use this platform to share this information. And this is in the process of psychotherapy, page 14, um, paragraph three. The ear translates, it does not hear. The eye reproduces, it does not see. Their task is to make agreeable whatever is called on, however disagreeable, it may be. Mm. So it just goes to show you that our reality is not what we believe it is, right? You and I can witness the same event, and I could see it in one completely different way than you do, because I'm looking at it through my consciousness and my reality and my filter, and you're looking at it through your consciousness, your reality, and your filter. That's why humans are the worst uh, witnesses, right? <laughs> you know, we should never be called as a witness. Okay. But anyway, I just think it's just so profound because it goes to prove that we generate our own existence and our own reality. So it seems to be, it seems to behoove ourselves to release all of our traumas, to cut off those sandbags and to live as peaceful and as beautiful and as joyful a life as we possibly can. And that's it. Well, thank you. And you brought up insanity. And it's funny because if you look at the Latin word for for sanity, it, it's sanus, which means healthy. And you put an I in front of it, it means not healthy. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I really sure. appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Um, You're welcome. How do we find you? Um, maybe your links and the work that you do to support you and or maybe contact you. Well, um, you can find me through my website, annemarietheartofhealing.com. And uh, there are links to my YouTube page. I'd appreciate that. Um, and uh, it talks about all the services that I provide. And you can certainly communicate with me through there. And I want to thank you again for having me on. This is awesome. No, thank you. I really enjoyed it. And I love learning from you. So I really appreciate it. I'm going to end it with the Marianne Williamson quote. Yes. Each of us has a unique part to play in healing the world. Thank you for the art of healing. And thank you for your wisdom. Thank you so much. Take care. Namaste. All right. Ciao. Just know we out here. No, we all here working in a major way. How to speak on it just to make a play. Any given subject, no, we make a way. Time to level up on the day to day. No, we all here working for the greater good. Expand your mind, brighten your lens the way you should. From the stars to the galaxy to speak on spirituality. I understand for the neighborhood.